And one of the uh, one of the all stars you'll see on Sunday playing on Team LeBron. Got that fresh cut too. Look at him getting it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a Charlotte cut or that's a New York City cut. New York. That's a New, New York. York. Yeah, he sure. went back home for the Bronx. Man. He, he went to. back. He yes. went back and got that. By the way, Kemba Walker joining us now. Uh, second straight All Star appearance. Um, it's always interesting, I think, to to see how players approach this as being an honor to be there or as a learning experience, that kind of thing. What do you take away from being at All-Star Weekend, Kemba? Uh, I think for me, it's, it's the camaraderie, you know, being around the guys that you compete with on a, on, a, on, a, on a daily basis. You know, we don't get a chance to really communicate, you know, as much as we would like to because well, some of those you know, dudes, we're playing. I see them on vacation. Vacation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of the guys. Kim, but you're, you're very, dark. you're not really talked about a lot. So is this your moment, like when you get in the game, do you say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to make sure people know the name Kimber Walker Day? Uh, are you going to go for the MVP or are you just going to go catch a sweat and then, you know, just chill out? <laughs> or are you um, going to go for it? You know what, I think the, I think the start is set the tone, you know. Um, but when I get in there, I try to have fun, you know, do what I can do. I definitely want to score. I mean, can't go in the game and not score. My friends going to kill me for that. But uh, I try to enjoy myself. You know, if, if you look at um, what you've done and what you accomplished and where Charlotte is now, what makes you guys take that next step and be playoff bound, keeping the atmosphere in Charlotte and that type of excitement? Uh, we got to get more consistent. I mean, that's that's the that's the, that's the biggest key. You know, consistency is is, is really important. Um, and that's where we struggle, right, at, at this moment. So, no, as long as we get more consistent, you got a lot try of to win, win some more games, we'll be fine. Oh, let me ask you this question. Uh, you played well this year. Uh, the Whites played well this year. What's the deal with Nicholas Batum? Um, you know what? I think his his injury early on, you know, messed him up a little bit with his rhythm. And, you know, he's still trying to find that balance, you know, still trying to find his rhythm. So, you know, it takes time. And I know, I know the season is winding down, but... You know, I think this break will help all of us, um, definitely him, and, you know, we're going to you know, try and kick things up a little bit. Let me ask you about what the last couple of weeks have been like for you. You're a, all seven seasons of your career have been in Charlotte. I was reading Rick Bunnell's uh, profile of you in the Charlotte Observer, and he talked about the fact that you're building a new house there. This is this is where you live, but your, names are, your name was out there as... You know, at the trade deadline, real talk about what it's like to be a professional and be looking at, boy, are we going to have to pick up and go? What is that like for you? What's it like for your family? Uh, you know, it was the first time you know, that, that my name has you know, been on the trading block. So, you know, it was a little bit disturbing, of course, but, you know, it's a part of the business. Um, you know, obviously, you no know, Charlotte's where I want to be. I mean, I've been there for the you know, last seven years, and it was a place where I got my, my opportunity, the place where I got my start. And... You know, I've grown to, to love the city. The city has grown to love me. So, you know, it was, it was kind of frustrating to hear those rumors. But um, did, Michael you know, talk to, did Michael talk to you about that? He did. He did. And um, he, kept it, he kept it real with me. I mean, he, he's a really honest guy. And he called me and, you know, he let me know what it was. You know, he told me, you know, teams were calling and they had to listen. So let me ask you a question. When Michael calls you, what does he, does he say is Michael? And you, <laughs> what you, oh, you well, I know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> that number is <laughs> Phil Simms in the phone. Call ID. Yeah, yeah, it shows oh, up. I got, I got his number in my phone. Man. But I'm just saying, though, I'm just asking you, dude, when he called, he, does he just say, is Michael or the boss or what? He just say, what's up, dude? Okay. <laughs> I already know who it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something else that. Well, Michael used to call you. He don't call you no more. Before you upset him. Yeah. Before, you, before you upset him. What did he used to say when he used to call you? Yo, fat boy. <laughs> I, that's exactly what he said every single time. Yo, fat boy. Uh, let's, let's talk about something else that I, as, as I was reading this, this article. And I'm sure you're 61170. All right, not no, the biggest, not, not the biggest guy, not you're the not biggest six guy six out Kimber. there. Kimber, he's but you said, one, man. But you say sometimes I feel like a giant. Okay, so number one, how tall are you? I'm six feet. <laughs> yeah, thank I'm six you. feet. Okay, yeah, six. sometimes you feel like a giant. They said, and Alvin Gentry said that he can't think of a more competitive player he's ever met. He said you're right there with Kobe on the competitive scale. That's 
Those are great words. I mean, but is that something that you have intentionally been? Look, I'm gonna. You're not gonna outwork me. You're not gonna outcompete me. Oh, no Ooh, question. I mean, since I'm a, when? I'm a small guy. Yeah. I mean, since my whole since basketball career. Yeah. I mean, I've always been small. Can't change that. So, you know, something you know, that that gets me over the top is my competitive nature, and you know, I, I bring that with me every single day. You know, on the basketball court. You know, it's, uh, All Star Weekend. Uh, what's the goals for the Charlotte Hornets after All Star Weekend? I mean, we got to pick it up. Set for the team? We we got to win. That's it. I mean, it's, it's it's no other way to put it. We got to you know take it day by the day by day, game by game, and we got to rack these wins up if we really want to make a push. All right, we say Charlotte got to make got to play and play better. Kimba Walker has to do. He what do you have to improve in in the second? these last 25 games to make that happen individually forget about the team mm -hmm. what you do will make the team go because between yourself and now Dwight at times but you're gonna make it go so what do you have to do to my leadership okay you know, it has to be it has to be top-notch and you no know, I'm, I'm gonna score you know I'm, I'm, I'm gonna you know play well on the court and you know but for the most part I got to bring people along with me and that's my goal for the for the second half of the season last question how much that bracelet cost? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my? No, no. I, was, uh, uh, I didn't say it's a $12 bracelet. I got this bracelet. front. No, oh, 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 we need gift. to see that, Kelly. No, it is good. Man. It was a right, gift, right. man. It was a, a gift. It was a gift. Well, you come <laughs> on. <laughs> this is the NBA. Never man. ask how much hey. a gift costs. This is the hey, NBA, man. Hey, the guys hey, have money. Listen, I got one of those in the steam room. Ain't no big deal.